There is a person at your front door. Seriously? Again? I grimaced at the rumble of the phone, turning over in my bed to look at the sleep cycle clock as I pulled the phone closer to my face. 3.02 a.m. Cloudy outside. No breeze. Fucking Christ. I've barely slept. I live in a suburbia part of the town. We usually get drunken asshats who forget to look for common identifiers of their homes and just ring their doorbells, expecting a roommate, spouse, or family member to let them in. Sometimes it's a prank, spurred on by bored and or drunk teenagers during the spring break period. And occasionally, just every now and then, it's something else. My condo has a large set of steps going up to the property, wooden decking with various bits of furniture including a hammock and some ornamental birds adorning it. My prized blue flamingo berry sits just in view of the doorbell camera, a trusty guard if there ever was one. The reason I got the damn camera installed was because of Barry, funnily enough. I don't know if it was wildlife or just some asshole, but... Someone pulled him from his perch and threw him into the bushes in my yard, scratching at his paint and going for the eyes. I figured it may have been someone looking to case the area and trial a scene to see if I reacted, but I'm a heavy sleeper most nights, so the camera was a good decision. Keeping one eye closed so I could just go back to sleep after inspecting the camera, I flipped it open to the app. I have one of those Nest Hello cameras. They've got some crazy field of vision and work well in the daylight. Even if the nighttime view on mine is a little grainy at times, some weird screen tearing happens around now when I look at the footage. No clue why. I look at the screen, and sure enough, nothing is out of place. The furniture is still there, hammock is swinging, and Barry is staring dutifully at the door. I'm about to close the app and curse some weird glitch for waking me when... it hits me, and my sleepy eye snaps open as I turn over to look clearly. There's no breeze outside tonight. Then why is my hammock swinging? Furthermore, Barry is positioned to look out at the yard, I do it as partly an aesthetic thing, and symbolically, he's the guard of the house. So why is he looking at the camera? It unsettles me. Even if he is just an inanimate object, I feel sympathy towards him as much as I do fear in this moment. This isn't special, of course. I, I mean, I pack bonded with my Roomba when I found out it gets scared during thunderstorms, but the point remains that Barry could not move himself. Then who did? I close the app and take a moment to study my nerves. I'd always been a nervous wreck of the best of times and I didn't spend money on therapy to get past trauma for nothing. I grabbed my stuffed animal and rocked myself carefully until I could slow my breathing. There is a person at your front door. Oh, fuck no. No, 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 no. I ball my hands into fists and smack my temples an even number of times in frustration before I hold them down and, tears in my eyes, breathe once more. I remind myself I am in control and take another tentative look at the app feeling my skin crawl as it loads for an incessant amount of time, letting my mind wander once more. The camera looks out onto my driveway and the adjacent road. Directly opposite is the McPherson house, and to the right of them is a small clearing into the woods surrounding our suburb. It's vast and thick, God knows why anyone would go in there. You could get lost for days, possibly permanently if you're like me and have a minimal sense of direction. 
I've spent so many nights afraid I'd wake up in there one day and struggle to get home, succumbing to the elements or encountering something in there that saw me as an easy meal. So when the app loads and I see something in the clearing, a long neck extending from a short body and pulling its way towards me, I don't even need to register it to have a knee-jerk reaction of throwing my phone to the floor and clenching my teeth. Enough is enough. I'm just being irrational, stupid, overthinking it just like everyone told me before. There wouldn't have been such a scene if I just... No. I'm not doing this. I tell myself, soft moonlight ebbing in from the bedroom window, situated on the opposite side of the condo. I'm not doing this. I look at the app, still open, and stare hard at the shapes on the screen, expecting a creature or a horrifying specter to appear. Nothing. The road is quiet, and there's nothing in the clearing. But Barry is still staring at me, and it is unsettling me more than I care to admit. I don't like when things are out of their place or positioned wrong. It just oh, it sets my teeth on edge and I feel like pulling every follicle of hair off my body when I can't alter it. It's torture. I put on some clothes and saunter downstairs, fiddling with the triple lock on my door. I'm just getting to the latch when I hear something that gives me pause. The ever so slight creak on the second step leading up to my condo, an older bit of wood that I intentionally left weaker. I'd love to say it was part of my master plan to catch a thief, but I just enjoyed the sound and as I said, I hate messing with things. Now, however, that sound was sending a chill down my spine and a horrible thought creeped into my head. What if they moved it intentionally? I stepped back and carefully slid the locks back into place, watching my movements as I found a safe place to sit down in my living room, hoping not to make a sound. I waited a good 15 minutes in absolute silence ears trained to the outside, before I felt safe enough to move upstairs, my mind thinking back to the incident that set all of this off. How over a decade ago, someone started showing up at my workplace and kept telling me I was the most special person they'd ever met. That I had, quote, such special genes, and they needed to know everything about me. They followed me incessantly wherever I went, knew all of my social media accounts, even the private ones, and made fresh alts the same hour I'd find and block the last, constantly spewing weird prophetic shit about how I would be the most revered member of their club. I remember the night he broke into my parents' house, waking up to them standing over me in that weird fucking outfit smile plastered all over his wrinkled and hairy face. And I remember wondering why they were smiling as they drew a serrated knife across my thigh and pulled the blood into a small vial before dashing for the door as I screamed the house down. The guy was a well-known nutjob from the homeless community who preached about some church of the Duskwalker, that he knew, quote, the all-seeing prophet, and the police had many run-ins with him, so they found him quick enough. He was sent to prison, and that was the end of it. For him, at least. It took years of therapy and a new job in an entirely new city to placate me, and even now, I struggle. All the defenses in the world can't seem to stop someone when they're obsessed. Walking back up the stairs, punching in the information to call the authorities, my phone notifies me once more. 
there is a person at your front door. With shaking hands, I open the app and have to put my hand over my mouth to muffle my scream. It's him. He is older and malnourished, but it is absolutely him, standing on the top of the stairs and leering at me, bent over and neck cocked to the side. But it's his neck. His fucking neck is too long. It's stretched out and there are veins all over it as it extends and pushes his head closer. Deadened eyes and a wide smile greeting the camera. I run upstairs and pull the blankets over my head, phone still in hand, and shakily try to dial 911, but I have no idea what they'd even do if I tell them what I've seen. The phone rings out for what feels like forever when I hear a thumping sound against my window, the unfettered moonlight casting a shadow on my blankets that scars my mind and shocks me into silence. His head is smacking against the window pane, either in an attempt to get my attention or, more likely, to get inside. Hands pull at the hairs on my head and I dig my face into my knees, begging for it all to stop with every ounce of willpower I can muster. I rock there, back and forth for an age, just repeating the same thing over and over, almost in tandem with his bumps. Stop it. Go away. You're not welcome. You're not welcome. It takes some time, but the bumping inexplicably stops. And then I hear a snapping sound followed by a low, desperate groan. I feel tears run down my face and blood from where I'd bitten my lip as I take in the intoxication of a silent night. There is a person at your front door. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is designed to break me. Shaking hands open the app. And for the first time, I can't contain my scream. It's an eye. A single, bloodied eye with full dilation jammed up against the camera. I can see something writhing in the darkness, twisting and dancing, beckoning to me, even as I shriek so loud that lights begin to come on at the McPherson house. Something in the blackness is calling to me, and part of me wants to go to it. Every logical part of me feels unmitigated fear. My legs are shaking, my heart is pounding so fast that I feel dizzy as I stand and I could barely hear anything in my ears. Yet, I still walk to the door, to whatever is calling me, eyes transfixed on the app as the strange shape beckons me. My hand slips off the first lock. The shape is no clearer, and yet, I feel the familiarity within it, the contours in the eye almost inviting. The second lock clicks in release, and a rumble is audible in my ears. I feel comfort and warmth. I pull the chain on the latch and start to open the door to my calling. When suddenly, the elder McPherson bellows at the top of his voice. Hey, who the fuck are you? Get away from there. You got three seconds. And a shot rings out that snaps me back into consciousness, hand still on the latch but pulling open the door as a blackened hand slips back through the gap, a horrific howling as it darts off the tree line. 
More shots ring out as I swing it open, still on instinct alone. The second scream sounds more familiar. My eyes blur and I fall to the ground as Mr. McPherson's wife comes to my aid. It's mine. My scream. Because all that was left on the doorbell was an intact eye. Stock and everything pushed up against the camera with some tape. Black blood pooled on the ground, on the hammock, and even on Barry. And a note had been stamped next to it. Something that would inevitably force me to move once again and deny any strangeness that occurred that night. Maybe Sturgeon isn't the best town for me after all. I don't know what it is they see in me, but the question I saw is more than enough to have me packing my bags. Do you see what I see? Hello everyone, and thank you for listening to the story today. Really quick, I'd just like to give a special shout out to the author, TJ Lee, who, on top of being one of my very good friends, is, as many of you know, an extremely talented author and actor. Some additional narrations from the Sturgeon universe will be linked in the description below, done by two other really great friends of mine, the Dark Somnium and Romnex, and some of which I also make a guest appearance in. TJ also has his own narration channel, Dusklight Radio, which will also be linked in the description. Thank you again, TJ, and I hope you all enjoy the vast universe they have to offer. As always, a huge, huge thank you to all of my poltergeists. Calderin, Cheryl Meredith, Evan Diaz, Gary, Imugi, Nathan Konark, and Spirit Father. Your contributions are so, so appreciated, and thank you from the very bottom of my heart.